Among the 22 candidates in the running to win the first Capital Trans Am 100. But how do they address this inaugural race? My opponents don't stand a chance. I'm predicting a landslide free car length victory. There isn't going to be any time for lobbying here in Washington, D.C. The speeds are going to be more than 155. Passing bills. I'm not looking to pass bills. I'm passing Boris and Paul and Bush. Forget the bull. I know I can come from behind with a late surge. The only thing prettier than the American flag is when me and my panel take the checkered flag today. Who will enter the congressional record as the inaugural winner and reign supreme on the court today? There's no more time for debate. Coming up, the Capital Trans Am 100 on CBS Sports. Welcome to the CBS Auto Racing Series. Today, featuring coverage of the Capital Trans Am 100. Round six of the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. Coming to you today from the inaugural race at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. Hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Shaheen, along with the man who has won on the Trans Am Tour, Bill Adam. And working pit road today will be Calvin Fish. As you can see, the cars are already out on the racetrack, warming up the tires, and we're just moments away from the green flag for the running of today's Capital Trans Am 100. Bill, a brand new temporary racetrack here today. Spectacular cars. How's this track going to do? Well, I think the track really is just mind-boggling. They've done such a good job. You can see we're going to get 61 laps here today, and even though there's only seven turns, because it is so tiring, there effectively is no straight here. It's a tremendously fatiguing track. That, along with the weather, I think is going to play a huge story for us. 28 gear changes over 68 laps, 1,700 plus times these drivers are going to be changing gears today. They'll earn their work today. Down here, turn one and two hairpins. There and there are excellent passing spots. The track is very wide. They have kept it 45 feet wide all around the track. And even on the hairpins, that extra width gives good room to pass either on or out of the corner. Getting ready to go green. As we said, 61 laps here today, around 1.66 miles is the distance of the racetrack. That'll make the race just a tick over 100 miles in length. And it is going to be a challenge both physically and mechanically. This track is going to take a toll partly because of the heat. Coming out onto the front straightaway now, we'll be looking for the green flag. And a very narrow turn one awaits them. Speed should be approaching 140 and 150 miles an hour before they hit turn number one. A little bit of a mind game right now. Butch lights are going to see her in the yellow Tommy Bahama car. Green flag, the Capital Trans Am 100 is underway. Butch Leitzinger will lead him through turn number one in the bright yellow Tommy Bahama Corvette. Tribute again to the track. The width allowed a perfectly clean start. All of those cars got through, although there looks like there might be one little mark right there in the front of that paint of Tony Ave. That's the red, white, and blue car. There's turn number two. Now down to the first hairpin at turn number three. That's Butch Leitzinger just ahead of Boris Set. Both of those drivers very hot of late. Now it's a drag race down another long straightaway to the second hairpin. Leitzinger said Ave, Mike Lewis, who is fastest in the final practice yesterday, the Jaguar. That's the Amer Suisse Jaguar right there. Then Johnny Miller and Paul Genelosi, the three-time champion, follows in about sixth position. Little wiggle coming off the corner there is Lou Gelati's Corvette. He is making another appearance back in the series. That's the S's at 5A and 5B. Swing through turn six, seven right there. And Tony Ave out onto the front straightaway to complete lap number one. It will take these cars two or three laps to get the BF Goodrich tires right at proper temperature. So we can expect to see a little more sliding than normal on the opening laps. Here's Butch again, back into this long right-hand hairpin corner. It's a beautiful turn. You can see again the width coming out. They can sweep right up the wall. All kinds of power being put to the ground here safely, and the track is beautifully smooth. The 76 car ah, done for the day. Jerry Simmons. Jerry Simmons, the two fast racing Westward Tools Ford Mustang, done for the day. Jerry Simmons also, he had a rough go back at Cleveland there just a little, a little while ago. Our last Trans Am race came into contact with Paul Gentilosi. 
Morissette told us just before the start of the race he was going to try very hard to conserve his tires. This is Boris right here in second place in that purple and yellow ACS Paynos. I don't know, Bill. Does it look like he's working hard on the brakes right now? It's hard to tell right now. I mean, it really is going to be a huge gamble for these guys. Exactly how hard do you charge early on? The big single factor in these race cars is, of course, the brakes. And normally, the brakes, we never have to worry about a Trans Am car. They're so powerful. But here, you've got stop-and-go situations. Hard acceleration down this front straight. Extremely heavy braking. And then both hairpins require extremely heavy braking. That, with the high temperature today and the fact that these walls actually hold the heat in between the walls a little bit more, even a few degrees more than a normal track would have, adds up to an extreme strain on the brakes. So yes, the drivers are more biding their time here than they would at any other track. Butch Leitzinger, our leader, as you take a look at this is what the starting grid was for today's Capital Trans. Oh, we oh. got one car around. And is that Lou Gelati? That the 25 is. 25 car of Lou Gelati, and look at the trail of fluids behind the car. He is done for the day. Yeah, he made two laps. That's, uh, that car is done. You can see everything just coming out right down here. What a mess that is. That'll bring out a pace car already in this race. Lou Gelati out of Dallas, Texas. So Lou Gelati's return to the Trans Am Series was very short-lived. And there we are. It is going to be a pace car situation. They will reform behind the pace car and try and get Lou's out of the way. That really, that's about the first major incident we've had at All this weekend, track. really, yes. Normally, street tracks are designed with very little thought given to runoff areas and uh, the, the safety. It's kind of a makeshift deal that you, you do the best you can with what you've got. Let's take a look at the replay and so figure out what happened to Lou. Well, now look in the background. He has come into contact with that car right there. In fact, I don't think that was Lou's fault. It appeared that this Corvette here might have run into the back, forced Lou into the wall on the inside back up here. Maybe we can get one more look at it, but I think Lou is just the unlucky recipient of a push. That's the number 9R Corvette out of California, Mike Cronin Jr. Now, fellas, don't worry about that. It's not on fire. Now, they're helping Lou out of the car, so he must have taken a real hard hit into the wall. Yeah, he's patting the car. He wants to get back in the race. He said, come on, let's fix it. Let's get the body work off. Take a little too much work, I would think, to get that one ready. That's an A.J. Foyt type driver there. Wants to push the workers out of the way and say, don't touch the car. Let's take one more look at it to see if we can see it. Watch way back, right when you see this first starting to to uh, develop now as we run this thing forward. Now just watch way, way back there. There is Lou Gelati's car. Now just keep an eye on that. And you see now right there, he's getting pushed sideways by the following car. Oh, he's going to take a hard impact that here. Driver's a... side. Oh, man. You know what? He's lucky he hit on that angle, actually. If that was a sharper angle, that could have been a tremendously serious impact. He's walking away more frustrated and angry than anything right now. Those cords hanging out here, Bill, these are all for the cool suit on the front side that he just flipped over his shoulder. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's cool suit, not his intestines. That was a light hit. That's, that's nothing to worry about. The drivers do their best to try and get cool in the races like this. And this is just a system where they, they plumb cooling water through a, a vest type of affair that they wear. And it, it helps a bit. I never liked it that much. So Lou Gelati out of the race, as is Jerry Simmons. His day done already as well. Butch Leitzinger leads here at the Capital Trans Am 100. Live on CBS, stay with us for more. The CBS Auto Racing Series is sponsored by Amerisweet. Don't downsize Amerisize. And by Sun Microsystems. We make the systems and software that make the net work. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Washington, D.C. in the shadows of RFK Stadium. Ralph Shaheen along with Bill Adam. The inaugural race here at this brand new temporary circuit. And, Bill, the racetrack is going to be great. Bush Leitzinger has been great in the last few weeks. Is anybody going to be able to catch him here today? I don't know. I mean, right now, Butch Leitzinger is driving with a lot of precision, and that's one of the things you do need for a circuit like this, because if you make that much of a mistake, you may be embedded in a concrete wall. Precision, 
I think a great deal of intelligence, like save the machinery for sure, that's all going to play a big dividend. Well, as we said, Calvin Fish joins us today, working pit road. Let's head downstairs to Cal. Ralph, recently we've seen some of the drivers try and squeeze 100 miles out of that 24-gallon fuel cell that is allowed in the series right now. Most notably, Tony Arby in the last race at Cleveland almost made his way onto the podium until a late race, late race cut down tyre put him out of the running. Here in RFK Stadium, fuel mileage is a fact here. Relatively low average speed, but very heavy on mileage. It means that Arby is the only injected motor in the field could make it all the way, but even his team is saying, we're not going to roll the dice today. He should be the first man in. Most of these teams try and come in as early as they can and try and maintain track position. Lap 10 for this team, the rest of the field, lap 15 through lap 20. Now in the last race we saw Mike Lewis run an injected motor. He switched to the carburation here and he's going very, very quickly. Fourth fastest in qualifying and fastest in the warm-up, looking at very low tyre temperature and very easy on the brakes. Mike Lewis should be a factor here today, Ralph. All right, Calvin, thank you. We're under our first full course caution. Let's take a look at the reason why, Bill. Well, I think Lou Gelotti just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and somebody just trying a little too hard. Way back here in the picture, right back up there. Look at this. Now, Lou is already sideways. This Corvette here has hit him, pushed him around, and Lou is hard into the wall. And at that point, thankfully, the car was actually spinning. It was rotating when he hit the wall. Now, Lou is angry. Look at this. Boy, oh boy, the, the crew trying to get the car off the track are pulling his car into the wall, doing even more damage. Holy man. Oh, he's, look oh, at no. that. Well, he's got a right to be livid. What on earth is going on? Well, right now, Mike's not, or uh, Lou's not nearly as mad as Mike Cronin Jr., the guy that uh, spun him around as he might be at the corner worker. Uh, look, look at this. Let me get the car off the course. The, the wheel on his car right there. Well, as we said uh, a little earlier, let's take you back through and show you the grid. You can see where they started and where they are currently running. Uh, most of the drivers at the front of the pack, pretty much right where they are, including three-time champion Paul Genalozzi. Start a little slow this weekend, did Paul, but he's starting to find the speed as the weekend progressed. Yeah, he's had a really strange season, and, and part of it is, as we go back and look at other races, is because of rule changes. They've had to make modifications to the Jag, and they say, well, it, it upset the balance of the car. He had it so well refined that it has almost given him a different car. That takes a lot of time to dial in to get every little thing right again because the Trans Am series is so competitive, you really do take a car and develop it to the nth degree, make it perfect before it's gonna win. Paul Fix has picked up a few spaces. He's moved up from 21st to 16th, so the Jaguar uh, of Paul Fix uh, really having a pretty good day already. Mike Davis making his first return to the series since Long Beach earlier this year, running right where he started it for Lou Gelati. Uh, done wow. for the day and getting his car torn up a little bit more than he had hoped. We were talking about uh, carbureted motors and the injected motors. Let's take a look at the weather too. It's blazingly hot, especially with the humidity here today. It is, and that, that is so fatiguing. Just imagine going out in a tennis court and putting on long underwear and then a ski suit over top and gloves and trying to play tennis for an hour. That's exactly what these guys are doing. They're on very highly physical sport and they're under uh, extreme conditions. They're wrapped up in their Nomex fireproof coveralls and having the helmet and all. And think of these cars, and the cars do not have the benefit of insulation. Keep Here's keep the things. points coming into uh, today's race. Poor has said the points leader, Butch Leitzinger, the race leader, sits third in the points, could gain some more here today. Stay with us, we'll be right back to the Capital Trans Am 100. on CBS, they're America's most unlikely roommates with nothing in common, nothing to lose, and nothing to hide. But boy, it is something to watch. Don't miss an all-new Big Brother tonight on CBS. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, Lance Armstrong and the world's top cyclists will hit the Tour de France as we go back to green. Down into turn one, Leitzinger continues to lead. We're back to green on lap eight. And Tony Ave there in that red, white, and blue panos in third place. He took a real good run of Boris up the inside, but Boris wasn't having any of it. Look at again, Tony. You just see him just shadowing it right there. He is so experienced on tracks like this, having run the Toyota Atlantic cars for years up at Trois-Rivières, Quebec. A track very similar in nature. 
I think that the background that he's got the history of this type of circle will help Tony. Toyota Land cars, small open wheeled racing machines, much lighter than these cars, not nearly as much horsepower, but the style of track, like you said, it's Trois Riviere in Canada, similar style of, style of layout. There are a lot of lessons you can learn, and, and certainly they pay off big time, as much as anything in car conservation, too. I think Tony knows how to do that. And Tony driving the Works Painos team, his car different than what we're seeing with Boris Sex's car. Right, different, but whoa, oh, look at Mike man. Lewis with the big power slide, big slide out of turn six. Now he's lucky, these BF Cooters tires, they can handle a few of those before they overheat. Normally on a race car, if you start getting loose, if you really drive the car sideways, boy, oh boy, John Miller getting a good challenge up here. He's got him too. He'll have the inside when they get to turn one, hard on the brakes. Miller and maybe Jenna Losey sneaking inside. He'll complete the pass as well. That's going to move them around. Miller now will go to fourth, Jenna Losey to fifth, and Mike Lewis will drop back to and sixth. Justin Bell also. Lewis could not get a good run off the corner. No, Justin's going to go up the inside and also has him. The big orange and blue Corvette pounds his way past. A little contact there with Lewis. Well, I think Lewis now has his backup, and he wants to try and hold that position at all costs, and I think he's going to do it. He'll yeah, Justin. The inside there at the hairpin. Very nice. That's yeah. a really good job of fighting back. All of that stemmed from him getting so sideways off that one corner. He lost all the forward momentum, couldn't get a good run on the straight. And with these cars being so equal, that's all it took. But Justin Bell fighting right back. Coming after him as they go into the section on his 5A and 5B. Backside of the racetrack. Justin's very experienced in these big cars, too. He had something I think we can all dream about, and that's a win at Le Mans driving for the Viper team. So he knows how to make a big car go. Look at this, he's trying them. And the thing about Justin, they have done no testing with this team. Jim Durhag, who owns that team, does a tremendous job of setting the cars up. He does. But no major testing program. No, it's not one of the teams that's blessed with big budget. It, it makes it so tough that you really need a driver like Justin who can come in and adapt very quickly to the car. But the thing that both of these drivers have to watch for right now is not getting so wrapped up in their battle that they forget to conserve the brakes. And that is easy to happen you get involved just the heat of it all. Now Mike Cronin in the 9R is going to serve a stop and go penalty. It was black flag. Remember, this is a car that was involved in the incident with Lou Gelati. Back to the front of the pack here. He'd better hope that Lou isn't waiting in that area for the stop and go penalty. Actually, I think the tow truck driver better be sure Lou's not waiting. You'll notice our CBS eye box in the upper left of your screen giving you the lap leaders. You see a red light next to a driver's name. That means they've lost at least one position on the previous lap. Green light means they've gained at least one. Johnny Miller's picked up a position here recently. And that green and black Jaguar right there, his teammate Paul Genalozzi right behind him, the three-time champion, and the blue and white number three Jaguar. What a driver Genalozzi is. I think he's the ultimate Trans Am driver because he never gives up. I mean, I, I really, really admire what Paul does. And he has built this team literally from nothing. I mean, they, they started out just nothing at all, and now they have... And look I at this. Justin Bell has gotten around Mike Lewis, and Stu Hayner is challenging in the white Corvette right behind it, the 0-2 at the Tom Bell sponsorship. Hayner is one of the guys that I picked to be a real strong runner late in the race because he, too, has so many years of experience running at Three Rivers in a variety of different cars. He knows how to conserve a car. Could Mike Lewis have gotten his cage rattled a little bit in the Amerisweet's car, or did yeah. he abuse the tires, you think, coming off that corner and just can't get the grip again? No, I, I think the BF Cooters tires will hold up fine, but it just maybe a, a little bit rattled at this point. He's just seen three people go by him, and now he's looking at his mirror again. The tendency is to start watching your mirror because you think, I need to take a deep breath here to settle down for a minute. Mike was the fastest car in the final practice yesterday. In fact, the BF Goodrich tire technicians came by, checked the tires, said his car was perfectly balanced, which meant as they took the temperatures across the tire bill, it was exactly where it should be, evenly across all four tires. Mike Lewis is one of the drivers that has continued to impress me this year, that he seems just to get better and better as the year goes on. He's, he's not only very smooth in the car, but he's getting a lot faster, so that's a comfort level that he's finding. He's got a good battle right there, though. He's holding off Stu Hayner coming in there, but this is Justin Bell's Corvette. That's good. I, now, I saw Lewis. I was wondering if he was going to fall to the temptation of maybe turning in early to try and block Hayner a little bit, and he didn't. 
He stayed on his own line, and that's really what you should do. Look at this three-car battle right here for wow. third place. Tony Ave in front holds down, but it looked to oh. me like, oh, look at Jen Losey. Jen Losey inside of his teammate, Johnny Miller. No team orders here. No, there aren't. These guys both told me before the start of the race, there are absolutely no team orders. John Miller in the, the green car there, he is driving for Rocket Sports Racing, but this is a ride that he rents. He buys the car, buys the time from Rocket Sports. So, no, no team orders at all. He's free to beat the bus. We talked about that final practice session. Well, Jen Alozzi had been slow all weekend long. When they came to the final practice session, Paul really hit on something and moved rapidly up the time charts. He was second quick in the final practice, shared some of that information with Johnny Miller, and Johnny said it made all the difference with this car. I like that, too. I like the idea of sharing, and I think that's that's always what you want to happen, but not always the case that happens. Let's check in on pit road with Calvin Fish. Well, the big story, I think, for this race, fellas, is going to be brakes, brake temperature. Now, the road is typically out to about 1,200. That's normal, okay? But the brake caliper is the big issue. They're seeing temperatures of 450, 500 degrees on the caliper. And what that does, that then boils the fluid and the pedal goes away. And that's really because of these hairpin turns. The guys are on the brakes a long time. Unlike a normal street track where it's a right angle turn, you're just on the brakes and release the brakes, roll through the corner. You're on the brakes for a lot longer, so you get that heat soak as boiling the calibers up and that's going to be a real issue at the end of this race hey, calvin we just saw Stu hayner pass mike lewis to take over seventh now and and i think jan Lozzi just got by ave as well I'm wow he looks like ave just dragged him back down that straightaway look at that wow good battle goal. well jan losey has got the bit between his teeth today he is running hard it looks like maybe one of the winglets on the front of Ave's car right there, Bill, might be askew a little bit. Maybe we get yeah. a tight shot of that and get a look. You see that? Yeah, it right does. There. It, it looks like it has broken off. Now, will that affect the performance uh, on the car? You know, hard to tell. It, it certainly is going to slow him down to the straight a little bit. Nothing slowing this car down. Boy, oh, boy. boy the Tommy Bahama court. Oh, look at this. Jenna Losey hard on the brake. Wow. Up over the rumble strip. Oh, and that might have hurt the car, too. Those he strips came to a stop, didn't he? They are huge rumble strips. He would have had to stay completely off the gas. The, oh, man, Johnny Miller. What the, a battle between these two teammates. Well, Miller, Mil Miller gave him so much room. That was ultimate being polite right there. To get back to Jan Lozzi's problem, when you go over these rumble strips, they are so abrupt to drop off. If you're hard on the gas, what you can do is snap a differential, snap a U-joint in the axle right away. Paul would have had to stay totally off the throttle at that point to save his car. Let's watch it again as he went over those rumble strips, Bill. To the inside, now, he came. Now, these are very, very sharp. At this point, the car, and right there, you see, he was completely off the gas. Heads up, very smart driving by Paul Gentilosi. He realized that he could have just trashed his car right there. That was sharp. Well, that's why he's a three-time champion, chasing yes, after his fourth championship. In fact, Gentilosi won three championships in three different makes of cars. Jaguar, Mustang, and a Corvette. Calvin? Well, the team is saying the car is fine, but that's something we contemplated before the event started. When Bill Adam went around the racetrack, he said, I'd be using those curves. And Paul Gentilosi definitely had to use them in that racing incident there with Tony Arve. Team saying no damage. Paul said the car's fine, but uh, something may break loose a little bit later in the going on that one, guys. Yeah, that, that is like going over the ultimate pothole. It just huge, huge drop on each of those curves. Just like a serious little alligator teeth. Only they're big alligator teeth. <laughs> now Justin Bell trying to close in on Johnny Miller as we go back to the battle for the lead. Butch Leitzinger, the Tommy Bahama Corvette, holding on to the lead. CBS Auto Racing Series coverage of the Capital Trans Am 100 will continue after this message in a word from your local station. Fern Ohio is overhead, providing us with great aerial views. Pilot today is Jerry Hissom enjoying the racing coverage. You ever had a ride in that? I'd love to. I did once before and it was great. On lap 15, just a lap or so ago, Tony Ave made the first of the pit stops today. Calvin Fish. Well, this is the dive plane that was ripped off during that pit stop, and this adds about almost 100 pounds of downforce to the front end of that car. Now, Tony actually dialed in a little bit of understeer into the car at the beginning of the race in uh, comparison with what he had in qualifying, hoping that the car would loosen up and have a good balance at the end of the race. But this is critical, not only for the handling, but also for braking. And this is one of the things that Paul Genelosi and that Rocket Sports team have been very mad about. One of these dive planes adding downforce to that plane has certainly given a lot of speed in the last couple of events. Mm. That's, That's a good point. Piece we saw dangling on the car early on. Yeah, it will. 
Here's a look at the top five. Leitinger, Seth, Genelosi, Johnny Miller, and Justin Bell as they start working through some of the slower traffic. Well, you know what Boris said, mentioned to us that he was going to show a fair degree of patience for the first half of the race, and it looks to me that's exactly what he's doing. Simon Gregg in the car that looks very similar to his teammates, Justin Bell is the car that which Leisinger is closing in on now. The other blue and orange Corvette. Simon, the son of a legendary road racer, Peter Gregg. Very nice move by Simon too. Moved over, got out of Butch's way. Also out of the way for Boris. That's good, that, that's good sportsmanship, allowing them to go through and have a good race. We've been talking about Butch Leitzinger, our race leader here today, and what's making him so good. I talked to his father, Bob, who's a, a veteran road racer himself this morning in the hotel lobby, and I asked him what he thinks is the biggest thing that Butch is doing different now, and he said it's his ability to set up the car, to, to communicate really? with his crew. He says he sits in the debriefing sessions with him, and he says Butch is talking a language I don't even understand. <laughs> I thought dad was gonna take all the credit for it. But it's imperative for drivers to be able to communicate, just like in a football game. If the oh. quarterback can't tell the coach what he's seeing down the field, they can't design the right no, play. I mean, in a lot of cases, it's like the proverbial little old lady goes into a gas station and, and she hears a ding, ding, ding in the car and a mechanic has to decipher what that might be. A good mechanic will know. Although Butch does a little more than talk about a ding, ding, ding in the car. Right. I think he can suggest shock settings and sway bars and springs and so on. He is very good. He's got a lot of time in, in the uh, American Le Mans cars. And now I think every additional lap he's getting in this Trans Am Corvette, he just gets better and better with it. Well, he was licking his chops to get here because this was the one racetrack that nobody had seen. Butch yeah. Leitzinger is listed as a rookie this series, this year, and that's really not what he truly is. So to come to this racetrack where everybody was on an equal playing field as the weekend began was great for Butch like bringing Michael Schumacher here and sticking him and wanted he'd be a rookie. There we go. Morissette makes his pit stop on lap 20 to Calvin Fitch. Well, Boris said he was going to be conservative at the beginning of this race and just try and be there midway and then put the hammer down. And that's very unlike Boris said. Now, we talked about fuel mileage. He needed to wait a little bit longer than he had. Enough fuel in this car to make it the distance. Now, one thing Boris talked about doing, Bill, is we see Tommy Dreesey pitting as well in his Jaguar. Boris was going to start with two harder compound tires on the rear end of the car, hoping he'd have more tire left at the end of the race. Yeah, it's an interesting gamble on his part, and I think what he was imagining was that as the fuel load burned off and the rear of the car got lighter and lighter, it would tend to get more wheel spin and thereby make the, the tire wear get even faster than normal. So he was trying to offset that gambling that right now, oh, uh, even though it wouldn't be ideal currently, at the end of the race it will, and that's when he wants to make his big charge. Now Randy Ruhlman, who is the teammate in the Tom Bloy Racing Stable to our race leader, uh, was held on pit road for a few extra seconds because of too much spillage of fuel during his pit stop, so a penalty for him on time. Something too to go back to that Boris said gave his pit crew total credit for the last victory. They said they just simply got him in and out faster than Butch. And Leitziger said the same thing. Leitziger came in in the lead and actually left in third place back in Cleveland. So Boris's stop right there looked awfully good. Pass for position here. Justin Bell and Stu Hayner. And Hayner will take over fourth position in the white Corvette 0-2. Right now, Leitzinger is running laps in the 112.7 range. Jen Losey is 112.4, so he's a little bit faster. And Johnny Miller, Justin Bell, and Stu Hayner are all in the 13.3, 13.5 range, so they're quite a bit slower. Now, Hayner and Justin Bell will tell you they're about 40 horsepower down, they think, to Butch Leitzinger. Tom Gloy, who owns the car that Butch Leitzinger is driving, will tell you it's Bush Leitzinger's driving ability that's making the uh, difference. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the oldest ploys in the book is that, yeah, he's got more horsepower than I do. And most people tend to feel that the Huffaker motor in Boris Set's car has got the big horsepower numbers. But we watch... Oh, here comes Justin Bell down pit road. Yeah, he saw him just duck out the last minute. So Jim Durhog's crew will get set to go to work on the bright hey, orange and blue number 40. We're all the way down here. Watch your pit feed. Bum Good. I'll give you a count down, down as normal. You see your sign? On that. Slow down, slow down. Stop. Justin Bell is in and Jim Durhuk has reported 
car is excellent. They made some shock changes before the race. Justin said, I can race this car and go to the front. He's getting the nuts from his uh, big man there. The fuel is in. Ben is out of the way. Justin Bell back underway. And he is the man on the street court to remember. He won at Houston last year, guys. Yeah, and he did. He had back-to-back -back wins last year, winning first at Laguna Seca and then on the street circuit at Houston. The reigning Amerisweets Rookie of the Year for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup Series. Justin Bell, too, has got a good background driving open wheel race cars. And I remember watching him have one whale of a good race back at the Palm Beach Grand Prix years ago in a, I think it was a barber car. He's good. The 9R back on pit road, Mike Cronin. Involved in an on-track incident earlier with Lou Gelati. And we see the race leader on pit road. There's Butch Leitzinger, Calvin. Butch Leitzinger is in. I just spoke to his engineer, Buddy Face, said the car is perfect. Butch is reporting no problems whatsoever. Remember at Cleveland, he kind of half stalled at getting out of the pit lane. Oh, and no, went, no, 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 no. Gets a go, and he's underway. No traction control there, guys. Burn some rubber. <laughs> oh, that big Corvette trying to rotate the earth as he left. He's good. He doesn't make very many mistakes twice. He told me that he only wants to go as fast as he has to to win. That's the thinking of an endurance racer, isn't it? It, it definitely is. I mean, particularly here, too. We have to keep in mind the heat and think about what these guys are going through. They've been sitting in the car now for over half an hour. Even though a few of those laps are under a pace car situation, that still doesn't remove you from the heat radiating at you. It is very, very exhausting. Temperatures in these cars today, well over 150 degrees. And talking to Johnny Miller this morning, he said basically the cool suit and the drink bottle only good for about an hour, and that's not going to get you to the finish of the race. No, nah, in fact, the drink bottle is actually useless after about five laps because it quickly becomes hot water. Here's Paul Gentilosi coming in. Gentilosi in, the Johnson Controls Jaguar. He was running in second, making his way down pit road to Calvin Fish. Paul Gentilosi makes his way in now. They made some big changes to this car for qual after qualifying. He really had a poor first practice session. Only got about 10 laps of power issues. Had big understeering qualifying. Changed the car last night. It was very fast in the warm-up. Good start for Rocker Sports. Oh, and a problem here. Big problem. Stuffed into the tire barriers is one of the Corvettes. That looks like uh, Ruman's machine. Bob Ruman's look, number 23. Look, look right here. You see a couple of skid marks going right straight off the track. That's the value of tire wall. Boy, boy look at those skid marks. This is Senwell Corporation back Corvette. Bob Ruman out of Monroe Falls, Ohio. I love a tire wall. It looks pretty bizarre right now, but it just saves so much serious damage. It slows the car down at a much more controlled pace. Uh, this is going to bring out a pace car again, I'm sure. Yes, there is. Let's see if we well, can figure out what happened to Bob. Let's see if we the replay. Okay. Wow. Oh, man, what an impact. Looked like he missed his braking point, I, had too much speed, and then locked it up, though. I, you know, I don't even know if it may, he might have lost his steering. That car just didn't turn it at all. Let's see if we can get a, a, a slow motion look at it, try and determine exactly what happened. Let's try to look at that right front wheel as he's coming towards us. Okay, now. now it didn't look like it's turned now. Out. Oh, there it well, is. Yeah, the, wheel, there. the wheel is turned. Absolutely is turned. I can't tell if those rear wheels are still turning or not. The front's definitely locked, but I'm not sure about the back ones. Man, look at that. It even moved the wall back. Sure did. That's current. That's, that's not a light little wall. No, that's... I believe these blocks, each of these blocks here, are 10,000 pounds. The red zone. It sure is the red zone. The career best eighth in the championship back in 1999 for Bob. He's won some amateur road racing championships at SCCA competition. Man, I think we need a monitor on the heart rate of our cameraman right there to see how high it went up when that Corvette was coming towards him. Right there. How's, how's the heart, Derry? Boy, that car is deeply embedded in there. 
debuted in the Trans Am Series back in St. Petersburg, Florida back in 1996. He's been on the podium twice in over 75 starts on the Trans Am Tour. Well, now, just to update all the people, too, after that rash of pit stops, we're showing Johnny Miller in the lead right now, followed by Mike Lewis, and Butch Leitzinger is in third place. The pits are open, so those who haven't pitted should be uh, making their way down, including yep. here comes Johnny Miller. I would believe we'll see there's Mike Lewis. Yep. And just about everybody else, I would think. Simon Gregg. All taking advantage of it now. Mike Davis, teammate to Morissette, and the other purple and yellow car, this one a Mustang. So that'll put Butch back into the lead, followed by Boris. Calvin Fish. Well, Johnny Miller has made his way in. The rest of the Rocket Sports team go to work here. Johnny is working on 17 straight top 10 finishes, hoping to extend that here today. He's got a lot of people, a lot of supporters from Eaton Cutler Hammer here at the racetrack. He says they'll entertain. Well, it's a bit of a problem there with the venting on the back. This has cost him a lot of track position. They weren't getting the gas in. Couldn't get the oh, 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 oh. That was a that was a bad pit stop for the team. Sure was. Paul Fix takes advantage of the opportunity to pit as well. Now we're getting word from race control that Bob Ruman is okay. The driver of the number 23 Senwell back to Corvette. You know, that, that's really pretty amazing. There's a lot of damage on the nose of the car there, but when you actually look closely, considering the speed that he went in at, there is not that much actual structural damage. Well, and you can see the greenhouse part of the car back here where Bob is is fine. Yeah, Everything in front of it is destroyed, but that's what's supposed to happen. Well, I think the, the windshield even looks okay. Now here's regular speed one more time. Ugh. Well, you know, you see the car actually, it initially made its contact up here and the rate of deceleration was really good. That's the value of the tire walls. And the end of that straightaway there, he was close to 150 miles an hour maybe? Had to be. Still has steering. Well, while they get Bob Rubin's car off the track, we'll take advantage of doing some business. We're still under yellow here at the Capital Trans Am 100. Stay with us. On a hazy day here in our nation's capital, you can see the majestic Washington Monument as we go back to green. Looks Leisinger in the lead. Boris Sad taking a look inside. Doesn't make the move. Look at Tony Ave close up on the center of the corner. I think Paul Gentilosi in third place in that blue Jaguar was looking for a, a shot to try and get by Boris on the exit of the corner. Just didn't have it, but that gave Ave a chance to close up on him. Butch Leitzinger leads the race in the yellow Corvette. Boy, I'll tell you, Paul is hungry right now. Paul Gentilosi in that blue Jaguar He's got makes him. a move inside for second place on Borisette and completes it at the hairpin at turn three. That's Tony Ave in the red, white, and blue painos right behind Borisette in fourth. Here comes Stu Hayner in the white Corvette in fifth. I think Justin Bell in sixth place hit Hayner a little bit of sideways motion off the corner. Nothing to worry about, though. Some lap cars mixed in there. We see Tommy Dreesey also inside the top 10. And there is Bob Ruman has crawled out of his Corvette after a heavy impact, the cause of our second full course caution here today. Good to see him out and okay. Yeah, and he has to thank a whole bunch of old tires for that. This is impressive. Look at the lead that Leitzinger is stretching out here on the start. For a guy that only wanted to go as fast as he had wow. to to win, he and really watch, looks watch like he's Tony putting Abbey. away. I'm sorry, Ralph, I just I thought I saw Tony Ave almost going to take a run at Boris there. Jim Lizzie's doing everything he can in that blue Jaguar to keep in touch with Leitzinger, but Leitzinger is just pulling away, Bill. Yeah, and I'd have to believe that once the pit stops are completed, that all of a sudden the strategy, uh, and right there over the curve he saw for Boris. The strategy of trying to save a car, you start to throw it out the window. You start to press a little bit harder here. We're almost halfway through the race. This is where you want to start pushing. And you see the Panos of Boris said just belching out the flames. And this Panos here of Boris different than this Panos here of Ave. We said that Ave's car is the factory back car. Boris's car has a Huffaker motor and the team itself, ACS, built its own chassis for right. that Panos. Right. The just, bodies are the same. The bodies are the same and that's it. They're they're kind of equal. <laughs> sort of equal. Tony Ave running back there in that red, white, and blue car in fourth, a former snowmobile racer. And Tony's actually driven all kinds of stuff. USAC sprint cars and midgets, and lots of road racing. God, there's got to be about 200 degrees difference between a snowmobile race and today. 
For more on these BF Goodrich tires that everybody is competing with here today, here's Calvin Fish. Well, as you mentioned, Ralph, you said that most of the field are on the softer compound, the 200 compound with BFG, but Tony Ave has a harder left rear, and Boris said harders, harder rears, both left and right. So that may be the reason why Jen Losey and Leising are a little quicker there when we go back to green flag racing. Even though it's very warm here, these tires do cool down. They're not going to be at their optimum, so it may take these guys a couple of laps to get up to speed. Bill, why would you put a hard cop down on just one corner of the car? Well, predominantly right-hand corners here, so it's going to wear the left a little bit harder. Now it looks like Leinsinger might have backed off his pace. It's not that the others are catching him. It just seems that Bush just lets, lets up. Oh, uh -oh. Justin Bell, big problems in the number uh, 40 not, Corvette. No more mechanicals here. Justin had a heartbreak mechanical. I bloody believe it. I've lost it. Well, you heard Justin on the radio. Can't bloody believe it, he says. Bell. Now it starts up. Boris. But it won't run. Trying. Hold on, guys. I've got to try. I've got to try. Come on. Fuck. Come on. I've got nothing here. Come on. Uh. Nothing. Second, nothing. Gearbox. No. I can't you, do it. Hold on. You can hear the frustration of a driver that was in the thick of the battle with a shot at winning. That's a gearbox. It just doesn't want to run. This is... This is just where you're sitting in the car praying, hoping that you've missed something, something obvious that you can magically go, aha, it's this, get it back into gear and get going. Looking for a push to get off course and out of the way. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, shit. Justin, you had a good run going. Justin Bell, now out of this one. Coasting off with a gearbox full of neutrals. So the corner worker is pushing him out of the way. Here it was, just coming closing, coasting to a stop. Actually, a big surprise here. Sometimes on the bumpy tracks, like we saw at Cleveland, you expect that sort of thing where the, the tires are loading and unloading and giving a lot of twist action to the gearbox, to axles, to everything. But here, this track is so smooth. It seems like mechanically, it was really very good on cars. Only the brakes take a beating here. Butch Leitzinger continues to lead with 32 laps completed here at the Capital Trans Am 100. Stay with us here live on CBS. The BF Goodrich Tech Fact. Here's Bill Adam. When you watch the Trans Am cars in the track and you see the great big fat BF Goodrich tires, you think there's a lot of rubber meeting the ground. Well, in fact, this is the actual contact patch. It's about equal to a man's size 10 shoe. And that is what's keeping these cars on the ground at really high speeds. Now, how to get the cars working properly? Well, the BF Goodrich engineers start with this. Kind of like your Palm Pilot, only it's hooked to a probe. And with this probe, they measure temperatures, starting inside, middle, and outside, to read the actual temperature of the rubber as it comes off the track. Every practice session, every race car is monitored in this way. Now the temperatures themselves are then loaded into the computer so they can see how the car is actually performing. Now the engineers are happy with as much as a 30 degree spread from the outside to the inside. That's fine. Ideally you'd like maybe an even spread of temperature, but 30 degrees is still quite acceptable. Beyond that, they know there's a problem. They can print out something here that they then take down to the crew chief and show, look, you've got a problem. Maybe you're running too much camber, too much caster, whatever. But through this interaction, through working together, the BF Goodrich engineers are not only making their tires faster, they're making the cars faster. Speaking of faster, Butch Leitzinger is really turning up the wick. He just uncorked a 111.938, and prior to that, the fastest lap of the weekend was a 111.636 by Mike Lewis in the final practice. Mm -hmm. He is running really hard. Though the one thing, as the track continues to get more and more rubber put down, this being a brand new circuit, it will get faster. The only negative to this is that as these cars are going around, the braking zones will decrease in size, allowing the passage to be more and more risky if you try to get off the line. Just the little tiny bits of rubber that are going off, but staying on line, yes, the track will continue to get faster all the way through this race. Past the halfway point. You can see Jan Losey also has pulled out a little bit of a lead. Right now, we're showing 0.7 seconds between Butch and Paul Jan Losey, and then it's 2.8 back to third place, Boris said. 
as they go underneath the Metro tracks. You can see the gap from our Goodyear blimp shot here. Genelozzi closing in under braking down into the hairpin at turn four. But look at the horsepower as the Corvette pulls away. 1.1 seconds. So many heavy braking areas. I mean, right through the little chicane here, they get a brief little squirt of acceleration, kind of gentle throttle here, flat on it again. That'll be Butch, and then heavy braking one more time, entering the start, finish straight. Now watch as they go down into turn one. Let's see how much General Lucci is able to crawl up under braking. He seems to be very good in that blue Jaguar under braking. Yeah, this is such a difficult area because as they go around this corner here, you're off the throttle and gently on the brakes. You can't push really hard because the tail of the car will come out. It's just like hitting the brakes hard at an emergency situation. If your wheel is turned, the whole car would slew sideways. They initially have to start with fairly gentle braking, and then once it's straight, then as fast as they can get under really heavy straight line braking. Butch told me if you get a good lap through turn number one, you'll be in a full, complete four-wheel drift all the way through the corner. Yeah, I believe that. Uh-oh, Butch. Oh, Trying boy. to lap Mike Davis. Mike Davis being very kind there, getting out of the way of both cars. Calvin Fish. Well, we've noticed that a couple of the guys have had transmission problems. We certainly heard the radio communication with Justin Belt and Jim Durham saying he'd lost all the gears. Same thing for Tommy Dreesy. Some of the drivers will use the gearbox as they're going into these braking zones to try and help with the downshift to slow the car down. The other thing the drivers are using is water. Now, they have three gallons of water on board, which are actually, actually used as water brakes. That means they have tiny nozzles spraying the brakes all of the time throughout this race, trying to cool the brakes down. Now, during the yellows, during the course, they turn that system off to try and preserve that water, conserve the water. It's only three gallons. It's a mist throughout the entire event. It's a lot of water to keep these things cool down, guys. That is. These brakes will be literally red hot. Oh, look at oh, Genelosi. Genelosi slides. He saw wow. that Simon. Oh, and now he's really off. He saw Simon Gregg sitting in front of him and had to change his braking. That's exactly what I just talked about. He had to get under harder braking than he wanted to as the car was still in the turn and the back just slewed out. That allowed Boris said to close up in that purple and yellow paint of the AC. Oh, and one car off. The 86 car has a problem. That's yeah, John, John Bauckham. Bauckham. And he's Jaguar. Yeah, he'll get going in without a problem. In turn seven. And now Genelozzi gets around Simon Gregg and continues to chase that man, Butch Leitzinger. Now, just that one little slip cost Paul Genelozzi eight-tenths of a second on that lap. That's how quickly it can happen. Stu Hayner has gotten around Tony Ave for fourth, so the big white Corvette on the charge into the top five. It's starting to look like this series is almost becoming a, a, a good Corvette series. Maybe their aero package is slightly better than anybody else because Butch is now leading and Stu back in fifth place. Very competitive. The Corvette leading Jaguar over Panos, Panos, and now another Corvette. Well, congratulations to The Late Show with David Letterman for four Emmy nominations, including Outstanding Variety Series. Now, Monday on Dave, don't miss actor Haley Joel Osment and an all-new top ten list. That's Monday on The Late Show right here on CBS. Tonight on CBS, Big Brother is back. They're America's most unlikely roommates. They've got nothing in common, nothing to lose, and nothing to hide. But, boy, is it something to watch. Don't miss an all-new Big Brother tonight on CBS. And every time I look at that little symbol with the three inside it, I think of Paul Gentilosi's sponsor, like Homelink. That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> There's Hayner. And Ave has now gotten around Simon Craig as well. Uh-oh, little contact right there. That's Johnny Ruhlman. Miller just rubbed the right front corner of Ullman's car. Randy Ruhlman in the 49 out of Greensboro, North Carolina. That's a team car to Butch Leitzinger, our race leader. You know, maybe one of the differences here is the fact that Butch Leitzinger's pit stop was a good two seconds faster than Paul Genelosi's. It looked very, very clean. That, that does pay off so well. I mean, you think of two seconds on the track. When you translate that into the number of feet in the track, it's it's like a football field. Johnny Miller in that green and black automation direct uh, Jaguar. Distinctive Jaguar smiling at us. Used to be a pizza delivery guy in Ohio. 
I bet he never had any cold pizzas. And he won a car uh, when he won a National Autocross Championship. And he used to use his hot rotted up street car to deliver the pizzas. Oh, and that man. was one pizza he got pretty fast. Guaranteed warm when he showed up. Yeah, I bet it was. Now, the pepperonis might not all have been laid out properly. They probably <laughs> slid all over the box, but got there quick. And the rear end on the Jaguar is starting to slide around for Johnny Miller. Johnny was able to put a little bit of distance between him, but here is back up the lead, Butch Leitziger, Tommy Bahama Corvette. Well, Justin Bell is out. Calvin Fish has caught up with him. Justin, we thought this track was going to be brutal on brakes, but we've seen a couple of drivers out with transmission problems. How is the track holding up out there? A lot of concerns about the track service with newly laid asphalt and running these heavy cars. I have to say, you, the organizers of this event, I think every temporary road circuit you know, sort of promoter in the country, in the world, could look at the job these guys did here. I mean, this is perhaps the most finished racetrack I've ever been on as a, as a temporary track. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. I mean, we've got 750 horsepower and 22 cars, and we're not even turning up a bit. So I'm pleased. It's brilliant. You've been out of the car a while. You're still pretty warm here. How are these drivers going to hold up in these very hot race cars on a very hot race track? Well, you know, if, if, I'd, if that had been the last lap and I'd been in the lead, I'd have been glad it was over. <laughs> But it wasn't, you know, it, it was about 168 degrees in our car um, just then. And I, I drank three liters of fluid by the time we got to second yellow. I was so unhappy, I pushed the button and there's no more water. But, you know, I'm very sorry because, you know, the Extreme Lens Corvette has been, you know, we've been up against it this year and we were, I hadn't used the brakes or tires once that whole race because I was just able to run behind and uh, it would have been a fun last 20 laps. Right, we'll see you tomorrow again. Hi, Calvin. Thank you. You know, I spoke to Chris Lincheski, one of the founders of this event earlier this morning, and he said as the event got going this weekend and word got out about how good it was, he was getting phone calls from all over the world. And he should. CBS Auto Racing Series coverage of the Capital Trans M100 will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Tonight on CBS begins with an all-new episode of Big Brother, followed by Craig T. Nelson in the district. Then go inside the secret world of the CIA. Don't miss the agency. It's all here tonight on CBS. Now next up, the CBS golf crew brings you the SBC Senior Open. A great event brewing over there. The leader is up by one stroke with four chasing him. Just one behind, Ted Cohen leads going into today's coverage. For go to cbs.sportsline.com, America Online, keyword CBS Sportsline. Here's your Automation Direct race summary after 44 of 61 laps. And it has been domination by Butch Leitzinger. He qualified on the pole, really has just driven fast enough, and that might be the key just to keep ahead of all challengers. That's our Automation Direct race summary. You see uh, RFK Stadium in the background, home of the DC United and the Washington Freedom, men's and women's professional soccer teams, former home of the Washington Redskins. And we are racing literally in the shadows of it. Yeah, and again, talking about shadows, Paul Genlozzi in that Johnson controls the blue Jaguar is still on the tail of Butch Leitzinger. He is not letting him get away at all. So I wonder if Paul really is maybe playing a little bit of a weight game too. It, it's a very much a game of psych at this point. Genlozzi's dipped into the 111 second, one minute 11 second range as well. That so is a rocket. He is in the rocket sports car. Yeah. You like that? I was waiting. For okay. There. There's his teammate, Johnny Miller, right there. And Miller runs bit farther back in sixth right now. Well, we're halfway through the season, too, as you look at Tony Ave, the red, white, and blue paint house just in front of the Automation Direct Eaton car of Johnny Miller. Ave holds down fifth position. So if Genelosi wants to make a run for the championship, he's really going to have to start pushing now, so he can't really afford to allow Leitzinger to just grab another win. Yeah, here he is. He now has the new fastest lap. We had just spoken about Butch Leitzinger having recorded this magical lap, and suddenly Paul pulls out this blister. There's a pass for position right there as Miller gets around Ave to get back inside the top five in I fifth position. I wonder if Ave's tires are maybe going a little bit off. I really saw him wiggle badly coming off that corner there. Now, there's a nice gap right there. Paul just getting blocked momentarily behind that. Corvette that he's lapping the number 48 car that would be Jack Wiles Jack Paul, Willis sorry Paul told me last week at Cleveland that he was no longer going to be Mr. Nice Guy that if he could catch Leitzinger he was going to drill him 
and he's, you know, as, gentle uh, as, as only gentle as yeah. he would say, he said, if there's an eclipse, you can be sure I'm hammering on the kid. <laughs> so I asked uh, Butch about that, and he said, well, you know, when you're in this position that he's in right now, out front, he said, you have to be like a football player. You know you're going to get hit. Yeah. You have to square the car just like a football player would square his shoulders oh, yeah. so you don't get knocked off your feet. You want the car to get hit, but you've got to make sure, Calvin Fish, you can keep on rolling. <laughs> that is the keep on rolling. Those brakes underneath the race car. I just checked in with some of the leaders. Ave and Hainer are saying that they're suffering a little brake. Butch Leikensinger are saying that their car is perfect. So, shape and his pursuers are not. All right, but Calvin making the point that Leitzinger's car is perfect, and boy, the video tells that story over yeah, and over Yeah, I, I think the heat's getting to Calvin's microphone today as well because that is really hot down the pit road. Now, something, too, when we get closer to the, the end of the race, that as I was going around this track earlier in, on Friday, taking a look at it, there are a number of areas that would allow a desperation last lap pass. Oh, you and think? maybe I can show you this later on because... If I'm running second place, there's a couple of tricks that maybe I'm going to try and for Paul. this next hairpin, baby. Yeah, I'm sure Paul knows about them, too. Well, Paul Genelosi closes in on Butch Leitzinger. The Capital Trans Am 100 live today on CBS. We'll be back for more right after this. Play Fantasy Auto Racing and check out other great fantasy games. Just click on Fantasy at cbs.sportsline.com we're on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportsline. Next Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, Craig James hosts the CBS Sports Special Quest for Number One. Get the scoop on the top national title contenders, the major conference heavyweights, and the leading Heisman hopefuls, plus an in-depth analysis of the SEC. The Goodyear Blimps pioneered airborne camera facilities in 1962, and since 1925, they are a familiar sight over major events. Our aerial views are courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships. On the wings of Goodyear, providing a view of America. Today's pilot is Jerry Hissop. There's a view from high above our racetrack here. The inaugural event, the Capital Trans Am 100, and what a weekend it's been. You know, a tremendous facility. Our race leader is Butch Leitzinger with 49 of 61 laps down. Gentilos, he said, Hayner and Miller right in there as we take a look at the faces inside the top 10 all the way back to Willis. Paul Fix having a good run up tonight. He started way back in today's race. He did. He could win another hard charger award today. That, that's an excellent progression through the field. But Butch Leitzinger, I, I continue to be impressed by him. He is just so good, so calm under pressure. And you think he's coming in here doesn't really know these cars very well, doesn't know the competitors, but he's very smooth. What's impressed you the most about Butch Leitzinger? I mean, I know you've known him from lots of different road racing, but he's getting used to a whole different car. He told me one of the hardest things was getting used to the difference of downforce, and that's not an easy thing to do. No, I, I think I really agree with what his dad said, that I, I like his approach very much. He's very soft-spoken, but... His intellect is showing through. He really tends to, to study the car. He wants to learn every little bit that he can and then applies it very quietly. There's Paul Fix, who we talked about earlier. The Royal Purple number 77 having a good run here. His family has probably one of the greatest collections of Jack Roush Racing Trans Am wow. and IMSA cars. And anybody I know, they, they must have six or seven vintage Trans Am cars from the Roush Racing Stables. And do, do you think he'd let you and I maybe go out someday? And Boy, I wish. Not. In fact, he was taught how to race from his wife, who uh, used to be a vintage car racer, and Paul got started just restoring cars, and they started going out, she started taking them to the races, and now he's the one who's a professional race car driver in the family. In fact, the family still does vintage car racing with their Trans Am cars uh, when they're not off racing professionally with Paul. That's a busy schedule. Butch Leitzinger continues to lead. About nine laps to go here in the Capital Trans Am 100. It's gonna get good in the closing stages of this one. The CBS Auto Racing Series is sponsored by Amerisuite. Don't downsize Amerisize. And by Sun Microsystems. We make the systems and software that make the net work. 
And there's a good look from high above the racetrack here in Washington, D.C. from the Goodyear Blimp. We want to thank the folks at Goodyear for bringing the Blimp out today. Fly over the racetrack and give us such great views. You know, maybe we can get one more glimpse of the track from up above. I'll show you this ID that I've got for the last lap. That well, here it comes, because that's turn three. It's the next corner that you're talking about, yeah, and the let, second hairpin. And I'll tell you what you could do. You could maybe get away with this just once. If you're Paul Gentilozzi, instead of going all the way into the corner, you go right there and cut across that island. Look at how big it is. And you, you could do, do it. You could do it once. I mean, you're at big risk. If you do it twice, they're going to flag you into the pit lane. But on the last lap, to try and get the lead, if I'm Paul Gentilozzi, I'm going to do it. Well, the car might not survive a second trip through there anyway, would it? It's only got to make one. You Paul can Gen see that he is really just down to 1.4 seconds behind. So if he gets close enough, I expect he will try something like that. And he's been keeping pace with Butch Leitzinger just a tenth or two off each lap. With six laps to go... Yeah, in fact, on that last lap, he oh, took seven-tenths off. Well, and they got a slower car in front of him, so that's going to make a big difference and really help Paul close up a little bit. Butch gets around the slower car. The number 48 oh, machine right there. That's the 48 of Jack Willis. Paul goes way over those rumble strips one more time, but again, this is the point in the race when, well, you maybe start throwing away your caution a little bit more. You start to use the car up. Let's go to Calvin Fitch. Well, as Gentilozzi closes down on the leader, Boris said is dropping back a little bit. We just checked in with his crew chief who said he's lost the power steering. Now, I can't imagine after this many laps in this heat getting through these hairpin turns, Bill Adam, with no power steering. I think I'm going to challenge Boris to an arm wrestling competition when he's done. <laughs> it's about the one time you'd beat him. Yeah, I think you would beat him now. That would wear you out. For the viewers at home, try that sometime in the luxury of a parking lot someplace, not close to any posts. Switch your ignition off as you're going forward and try and turn your power steering. It's like... It Not just doesn't easy. want to move. All right, so what does Genelozzi do to make this pass? Does he save it for that one corner? Is there somewhere else on the track where he might be able to make the move? I think what he wants to do is just close in a little bit of time. He wants to make the pass on the last lap. I mean, in other words, don't give Butch the chance to respond and get back by him. So Paul just needs to close a little bit each lap. Don't make a Banzai move at this point. Be real patient. Drive in. Be very neat with your apexes and try and take advantage. It's much easier to follow a car ahead because you can see where he's making mistakes and then set your car up accordingly. All right, that corner is coming up the very next uh -huh. turn. Let's take one more look at it here. Here okay. it is. Turn now, if, if Paul were to come down the straight and instead of going into the corner, cut right there he goes across the bumps at that point and across the bumps at the exit but it doesn't matter he shaves off a lot of that corner so what does butch leitzinger do because obviously he's no. a race car driver can he defend that in any way i don't think he can i mean he wouldn't initiate it in case paul didn't follow him but you're almost being controlled by the car following it's one of the very few points the best thing Leitzinger can do now is just try to drive, drive his smooth own. and drive away. Yep, definitely. And he's good at that. And boy, we have seen it. Well, he dips well. into the 111s again, and, <laughs> and that's what you got to do if you're Bush Leitzinger. Talk of responding. And again, he looks so smooth, so in control of this car that you don't see 11 the 9 plus 9 tenths. You're doing a great job. That's the crew giving Bush Leitzinger his speed, his time and some encouragement. Yeah, telling that he's nine tenths ahead of Paul, but I don't think he knows that. There's that big blue Jaguar that is filling the mirror of the Corvette right now. Boy, boy, Gentilozzi can just taste this victory. He is definitely closing. Look at that. That's the closest that, he's been all day. That is it. That is definitely the closest. Leitzinger again, though smooth off the corner. He is not being rattled by his pressure. Well, the Trans Am Series all about American muscle versus the world, and that's what we have here today. The Corvette versus the Jaguar. Might I guess which car you're pulling for? What, just because I, I own one of the yellow ones? I enjoy both of these drivers, and I think that, I think we're going to have a spectacular finish here. Well, I, I've seen you wear a Tommy Bahama shirt too, Ralph. <laughs> 
Three laps to go here today. Simon Gregg will stay oh, on the pole again. Oh, look at Jim sliding the rear end. Boy, and that hurts his car. But he had to get around Simon quickly, didn't he? And that's why he went in a little deeper. He made, he made the slightest slip. He just overcorrected his slide a little bit, and that's what took him up over those rumble strips. But Genelosi dipped into the 111s on that last lap. A yeah. 111.8 compared to a 12.1 for Butch. So, boy, their speeds are right there. So competitive, this field. Now, Paul just has to be patient again. But now, he's, doesn't he have to hustle a little bit to make that up, that ground that he lost? He's going to be hustling a little bit, making his shifts maybe a little bit faster. And you can see by that braking, he is getting as deep as he possibly can. Now, here's the rumble strip again. Look at the car. Just bashes over those strips. Boy, oh, boy. And almost comes into contact back there with Simon Gregg's car. Genelosi said that when he raced Tom Gloy as a driver, Gloy was relentless. As a team owner for Butch Leitzinger, he said he's exactly the same way, and he loves nothing more than to beat Tom Gloy racing every chance he gets, whether Tom's driving or just his team. 12.4 raising 1. that bar. Calvin Fish. Oh, we're down here with Bob Leitzinger. You're watching your son there out on the racetrack. Got real close there with Paul Genelosi. Any problems with the yellow car today? No, he's not reporting any problem at all. Uh, I'm just a little concerned about tire wear this late in the session. You guys went with the softs all the way around, same as Paul, and uh, you thought he may be struggling with traction at the end of this race. Uh, when I watched him go through turn one two laps ago, uh, it gave me that indication, but it seems to be okay right now. All right, well, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks. Bob's got about six stopwatches here. He's got earpieces, got everything going on. He's praying that Butch can get to the checkered flag first, guys. Yeah, and I'll bet if you talk to him after the race, he won't even remember speaking to Calvin. That's the nerves of a dad watching his son and being very proud about it. I would bet right now that Paul Gentilosi would pay a lot of money for those two seconds back that he lost on his pit stop. Absolutely. Paul Fix gets out of the way and Gentilosi slides by. They'll be seeing the white flag this time by flag, the flag, starter flag, stand. Flag, flag. And you hear how calm his crewman is. Just last lap. Getting around Simon Gregg cost Paul Genelosi a shot at this win, didn't it? Well, we, we can't blame Simon. I mean, no, 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 four plus no. 1.5. It was that moment where he slid the car that cost him all the, the Yeah, I mean, he, he'll look back at a bunch of different things. He'll look back at the two seconds he lost in his pit stop and think, if only he can look back at Simon Gregg, like block traffic causing that little bit of a problem. You always second guess yourself, but if he finishes second place, that still is a good, strong finish for Paul and gets him a little bit closer to Boris in the championship. As a kid, Butch Leitzinger grew up in a racing family. His dad, of course, a veteran of many road racing years. Butch used to sit around and watch the other drivers on TV and critique them how they handled their victories. He used to tell his dad what he thought the drivers did right and what they did wrong. In another couple of corners, Butch Leisinger is going to get his opportunity to do his best in Victory Circle as well as he makes ah. his way to the first checkered flag of the Good Capital job, Trans Am 100, winning the inaugural race today. Good job, Dad. Bob Leisinger celebrating as his son Butch wins another one on the Trans Am Tour. What a year he is having. It's awesome. Please, please, please give me water. Please, please, please. 10 -4, 10 -4. Give me water. Let me see if I can even call him on the track right now. Butch, Bill Adam in the television booth. How are you? That was an outstanding race. You drove perfectly, but how hot is it out there? It is unimaginably hot. The, uh, the worst thing is that my drink system failed about halfway into the race. I said the light. It didn't fail. It just ran out of water because I was sucking so much of it. Uh, but it the last half of the race has been excruciating. But uh, the Tommy Bahama team did such a wonderful job. I'm so proud to be on their team. They got a lot to be proud of. Thanks very much, Butch. Cheers, Bill. Paul Gentilosi, Bill Adam in the television booth. Can you hear me, Paul? Well, maybe he has unplugged his helmet already. Hand out the window. He, too, will be hot. That's keeping up with the young fellas. 
Paul Gentilizzi did a fantastic job here today. I think Paul is still 16 years old at heart. Yeah. Struggled to get that car working right yesterday. Found something in the final practice and used it beautifully here today. There's the results. Leisinger wins. Gentilozzi second. Boris said the points leader will stay there as he comes home in third. Stu Hayner, Tony Ave, Johnny Miller coming in. We should give a tip of the visor to Randy Roman, who did a great job coming he home in seventh. And Paul Fix as well, yep. who came home in ninth. Both those drivers doing a great job here today. Lou Gelati and Jerry Simmons rounding out the field here today. Pulling into victory lane here, the inaugural Capital Trans Am 100. Driver, the Tommy Bahama Corvette, Butch Leitzinger. Give that man some water. He'd love the trophy, but please give him the oh, water first. Oh, yeah. That was a race. Good job, Butch. Butch will be crawling out here in just a second as soon as he gets some strength, I'm sure. Calvin Fish is down there in victory lane. And here comes our race winner. Here he comes. He's climbing out of the car. We've got a big trophy for him here. As in a bottle of water. There you go, Butch. You need that. <laughs> How about it, mate? Second win of the year, four podiums in a row after a rough start to this Trans Am season. You're on, you're on form right now. You're on a roll. Can you catch Boris for the championship lead? Who are you? <laughs> you're delirious. <laughs> it, uh, the, the car ran very well. Um, Bork is still doing great in the championship, so I'm not even really thinking about that. But Robert, Buddy, and everyone on the Tommy Bahama Corvette team, I'm so proud to be with them. You know, they're just such an excellent group of guys, and uh, the car was perfect. You know, uh, when you get a perfect car, it, 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 there aren't many times in your life that you get that, so you have to value it when you do. Great job, mate. You look pretty cool, Ash. Let's get back to Paul Gentilozzi. He had a great run out here. He was working hard. He was pushing push. He got real close there with about three laps to go, mate. Well, there were two guys in that race just working their butt off, and Butch drove fantastic. I, I can't say enough about how hard we raced and how clean. I could catch him under braking, but off the corner, he was just gone enough to be uh, to be out of my way. It was uh, it was Trans Am racing at its best, the way it always is, man. All right, mate, great job. He's a little tighter than Bush, but a great performance there by Paul Gentilozzi. The Jaguar boys are back on form. Thank you, Calvin. Pouring some water, trying to cool down their driver. Here's a look at the points as they chase BF Goodrich Tires Cup. Boris said leads Paul Gentilozzi and Butch Leisinger. Boy, that mm -hmm. battle is going to be a good one. So for Bill Adam and Calvin Fish, I'm Ralph Shaheen saying so long from RFK Stadium where Butch Leisinger has won the Capital Trans Am 100. CBS Sports Auto Racing Series coverage continues on August 11th at 12.30 p.m. Eastern with the Kart Grand Prix of Vid Ohio. Coming up next, live coverage of the SBC Senior Open. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.